Hello and welcome back. I'm glad that you took the time to tune in. I hope to make it worth your while. This time, I'm going to take a look at the Glock G48 Compact again. When I constructed my first review of the Glock G48, it was my first video review ever, and I have since realized several mistakes that I made with the first review. I did not spend enough time on the G48. I spent too much time on upgrades. I relied on a digitized voice for narration, and my editing skills sucked. I hope to resolve those issues with this review, but I will still address upgrades to my G48 and my methods of carrying it. The G48, according to Glock, is a slim compact pistol. The Silverback was the first rendition of this pistol, and according to Glock's latest website catalog, it is no longer offered. I held off purchasing the G48 because I did not like the Silverback. I did like the concept of a single stack compact pistol by Glock, since I have several from other manufacturers. Fortunately, Glock saw the light and offered the G48 in all black, of which I took advantage of and placed an order for one. The Glock 48 is, indeed, a slim compact pistol that holds 10 rounds of ammunition in the magazine, plus one in the chamber. Some, of course, have scoffed at Glock, only providing a 10-round magazine, when Springfield Armory offers the Hellcat with 11 rounds of magazine capacity, and the Hellcat Pro offers 15 rounds of magazine capacity. And now, the 6 Hour offering 12 versions of their P365, 12 to 17 round magazine capacities are available. For myself, I just wanted a slim, compact pistol other than my fat, compact G26, and the G48 provides that. I am not going to do a lot of comparison with the G19, as I did in my first review since that difference has already been stated. So, let's take a look at the G48 as it stands on its own merits. With an overall length of 7.28 inches, an overall width of 1.1 inches, and a barrel length of 4.17 inches, the G48 is, according to compact standards these days, compact. The 4.17 inch barrel of the G48 adds more stability to the firearm when carried IWB in a good holster. The grip length does not impact the concealment factor of the pistol, but does provide a bit more grip to grab a hold of when needed. The slide and frame at the muzzle end are beveled to help in holstering the G48. Note that there are no attachment provisions for lights, lasers, or electronic sights, which suits me just fine. The slide has received the NDLC coating a tougher finish applied to the same melanite metal treatment process. This finish is a diamond-like coating that is similar to the black nitride finish. The slide houses a match-grade Glock Marksman Barrel, GMB, and also features front and rear precision milled serrations. The front serrations can help those with weakened hand strength to pull the slide to the rear. The slide, by the way, is not that easy to slide to the rear by hand. This is due to the fact that the G48 incorporates a dual spring captured recoil guide assembly. The external extractor, as seen on the right side of the pistol, also serves as a loaded chamber indicator. If the extractor is raised slightly, a round is chambered. The extractor when raised, however, is difficult to see and feel. I always rely on the old saying, always assume that the firearm is loaded. G48 sights are offered in Glock's familiar square-notched rear and dot front in polymer and steel. GNS, or Glock night sights, are also available. More about the sights later. The frame features elements such as a short trigger distance, a built-in beaver tail, a reversible magazine catch, and a left side only slide lock. The action is, of course, the Glock safe action. The first safety is the trigger safety. It's incorporated into the trigger in the form of a lever, and when it is engaged, blocks the trigger from moving rearward. To fire the pistol, the trigger safety and the trigger itself must be deliberately pressed at the same time. If the trigger safety is not pressed, 
the trigger will not move rearward and allow the pistol to fire. The trigger safety is designed to prevent the pistol from firing if it's dropped or if the trigger is subjected to any pressure that isn't a direct firing pull. The second safety, the firing pin safety, mechanically blocks the firing pin from moving forward in the ready to fire condition. As the trigger is pulled rearward, the trigger bar pushes the firing pin safety up and frees the firing pin channel. If you decide not to fire and release the trigger, the firing pin safety automatically re-engages. The final safety involves the trigger bar, which rests on the safety ramp within the trigger mechanism housing. The trigger bar engages the rear portion of the firing pin and prevents the firing pin from moving forward. As the trigger is pulled rearward, the trigger bar lowers down the safety ramp and allows the release of the firing pin. After firing, the trigger bar moves upward and re-engages the firing pin. As the trigger is released, all safeties automatically re-engage. The trigger is very smooth and rolls through the wall before releasing the striker. That's the firing pin for us old folks. After a round is fired, you only have to release the trigger until it resets which is minimal and which you can feel. Returning to the frame, the takedown lever now has a coil spring rather than a leaf spring. The G48 exhibits Gen 5 grip texturing that provides enough gripping surface but yet is not obtrusive to the hand. Some, in fact, say that the texturing is not aggressive enough, but that is a personal thing and there are ways to rectify that. You can retexture the grip, or add a grip sleeve that does not alter the original texturing. I talk about the latter later. The grip length is the same as the G19, with just enough length that I can fit digits that are not used to pull the trigger completely on the grip. This fact is aided by a slight undercut at the trigger guard. The G48 grip has no finger grooves. In fact, all finger grooves on Gen 5 pistols are now gone. Finger groove grips or not, has not bothered me, as I can and have worked with both. The 1.10 inch grip width includes the magazine release button, which means that the grip width is actually a hair thinner and might actually be one inch. For those with small hands, the grip width might be the cat's meow. For larger hands, the grip width might seem a bit too thin, but that can be rectified, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Field stripping the G48 is no different from any other Glock pistol. But for those not familiar with the takedown procedure, let's run through it. First, make sure the gun is unloaded before you disassemble it. Remove the magazine and then check that the chamber is empty and make sure to remove any ammunition present. Next, you need to pull the trigger if the Glock is cocked. Then pull the slide back about a quarter of an inch. If you happen to cock the action while doing so, pull the trigger again and repeat. Pull the takedown lever down from both sides and then pull the slide assembly off of the frame. Remove the guide rod assembly and then remove the barrel. That's it. That's all you need to do to field strip your Glock. To assemble the G48, first install the barrel into the slide. Install the guide rod assembly. Ensure that the rear of the guide rod assembly is fully seated in the half moon cutout of the barrel. Install the slide onto the frame rearward until you hear a click. The slide is now fully installed onto the frame. This next step is optional, but it is something that I do to completely check the function of the pistol. I insert one A-Zoom snap cap into the magazine. My reason is threefold. 
First, I protect the striker by providing a soft surface to strike after I pull the trigger. Second, I can check extraction. And third, I can check ejection. After inserting an A-zoom or equivalent snap cap into the magazine, insert the magazine fully into the frame. Point the pistol in a safe direction and attempt to pull the trigger without pressing the trigger safety. The trigger should not move into the frame, thus preventing the pistol from firing. Pull the trigger with the trigger safety fully pressed and the striker should release. Move the slide forcibly to the rear. The slide should lock into place since there's nothing in the magazine. The snap cap should be extracted and ejected, or at least free of the extractor. The Glock G48 is a superb shooter. Placing 9mm projectiles where I want them is easy, as long as I do my part. Tilt recoil is mild and negligible, and muzzle flip is minimal with a good grip on the gun. Trigger pull and reset are excellent. I like the way the trigger rolls through the wall without feeling spongy. That adds to a smooth trigger pull. That adds to increased control of the pistol. The G48 runs through anything that I feed it. To include Fiocchi 124 grain FMJ to Sig Sauer 147 grain V Crown JHP and Hornady 147 grain XTP JHP ammunition. The Hornady XTP JHP garnered the best overall groups, and that is what is stoked in the magazine for defensive carry use. As far as upgrades, the grip is a bit small in my hand, and I have pretty much disliked the Glock standard sights. So, to address those things, I have added some upgrades. A whole grip sleeve with finger grooves has been installed. While the grip width is widened a tad, the grip sleeve with a softer texture and mild palm swell offers a better grip for my hand. The finger grooves help my hand fall into place on the grip and they also offer a hook, an index point if you will, when drawing the pistol from a holster. The grip is now a bit thicker, but does not affect concealing the pistol, but does aid when drawing and firing the pistol. As I mentioned earlier, I have not cared for the standard polymer Glock sights, but I must admit that they are fine for general shooting. I have come to really appreciate night sights, however. A set of True Glow TFX Pro Tritium Fiber Optic Extreme Handgun Sights that have a contrasting orange focus lock ring for faster focus, a quick and accurate U-notch and angled rear sight were installed. What a difference these sights have made. Although my eyes are old and I need new glasses, I was able to pick up the sights quickly. While they didn't help my shooting any, they did improve my aiming of the G48, and that is worth the cost to me. Just to mention one last upgrade, lest I forget, and it is more of a personalized nature. I rarely change any of my Glock pistols, with the exception of sights, but the G48 screamed at me to personalize it, which I was most happy to accommodate its wishes. This update came in the form of a slide back plate, a Vastian laser engraved butt plate, rear slide cover back plate for Glock G43, G43X, and G48 9mm only, great seal, which was available through Amazon.com. This was but one of the many backplates that Bastion Gear offers. I have placed a link to them in the description should you decide to change out the Glock backplates on your Glock, any Glock. Now that the upgrades to the G48 have been presented, it's time to talk about carrying and concealing the G48. I have two normal modes of carry, IWB inside the waistband and shoulder. Let me start with the IWB carry. The G48 has been carried in an excellent IWB holster from Missoula Holsters. I have a separate video review on this holster, 
and I placed a link to the review in the description. Let me just say here that the Azula holster for the G48 is excellent, affordable, well balanced, and has great retention properties on the belt and pistol. Provides protection to the pistol where needed and is made from quality materials, that is, leather, with a reinforced mouth to prevent the holster from collapsing when the pistol is not holstered. A separate magazine carrier from Remora Holsters keeps two spare magazines handy on my offside. My second choice of carry concealment is the Gelco Classic Light 2 shoulder system. With this system, I can carry the G48 with two spare magazines. Once adjusted properly, the shoulder system has a high comfort level and the G48 is easily within reach. I sometimes use the magazine side tie down to prevent the gun side from shifting too much, but the rig is well balanced with two spare magazines in tow. This shoulder system also works with other makes and models of comparable size to the G48, since the holster itself is not molded to a specific handgun. A critical aspect of concealed carry is selecting the correct holster. Don't be tricked into purchasing the holster that appears to be the trendiest. It's critical that the holster you choose is comfortable, durable, convenient, and most importantly, safe. I am not an appendix carry guy, and that is the reason appendix carry holsters are not mentioned. You might have noticed the suspenders. Aside from keeping my trousers up when carrying IWB, suspenders also keep the holster from swinging outward when carrying the G48 in a shoulder holster, when the suspender is positioned on top of the holster. This keeps the holster and the pistol as close to my body as possible to reduce printing. While the image may not show it, there is no obstruction getting to the grip of the pistol. These are my concealment options. Your choices, of course, may differ. I did not include the extended magazine and installable magazine release by shield arms for the G48. Nor have I mentioned magazine extenders for the G48 magazines. My personal thoughts are that if I need to carry more ammunition, I'll simply carry a pistol that can carry more ammunition, like my G45. If I need a larger and or more powerful caliber, I will simply carry a firearm that is built for a larger or more powerful ammunition. Your line of thought may differ. The Glock G48 has been integrated into my EDC rotation. It had been carried in my business bag as an off-body piece that could be quickly transferred to my hip when off business in the Azula holster. It fills my need for a light carry option that is easily concealable. That's it for this review. I will have other gun and gear reviews in the future, and I hope that you will return to view them. In the meantime, stay safe out there.